All right, welcome to the Hedy Vermont live stream. It is Monday, June 25th. Are you sure? Monday, June 25th. It's the final countdown. And we are here at the Jam Creative Studios. Thank you to our hosts for having us. We've got a special guest tonight, Mr. Will Reed, Canna Planners. If you guys have been Hedy Vermont events, been around the cannabis scene, you've seen Will. You've definitely seen his clients out there. Yeah. We're gonna talk about a lot of stuff, including juice. Juice. And actually, there's a very, very special twist on this juice. I don't know if people it's are going to be able to... It's soda, Eli. Uh, it's, it's soda. It's, it's soda? carbonated. Okay. All right. I wanted, Made from juices. Well, I want to give you that leeway because soda is kind of a bad word no, to no. a lot of people. So, mm -hmm. all right. This well, soda. we'll get into we'll get into the soda and let the let the intrigue build a little bit more about we what's, can call it juice. what's going on in that. It's just fancy juice. In that soda juice bottle. <laughs> um, big news is Vermont is counting down. Sunday yeah. it is on, July wow. 1st. We're gonna be throwing down in Johnson. Big shout out to Willow Crossing Farm, our host. Everybody who's at the Perma Canna Culture Camp, it is quite the heady scene out there. These guys went for a hike today. They've been doing hands-on workshops. Keith has brought in some heavy hitters. Um, they've even got delicious food being cooked out there. So. Thank God, we won't starve to death, people. <sighs> uh, definitely <laughs> not going to happen. It's funny because I have been in the preparation for July 1st, which we'll talk about a little bit more. Uh, I'm like telling all the food vendors like, you know, there will be X amount of people but plan for everybody to eat like three times as much as normal probably. So. Yeah, we're going to get hungry. Yeah, the, uh, we're gonna get hungry. the food vendors are not upset about July 1st coming. No. Uh, especially those of whom are mobile. Oh, let's put our Ooh. fire shot oh, back sure. up there. Um, so <clears throat> other big news, we talked a little bit about uh, the farm bill. That's still big happenings. Whew. Um, it has not, has not happened yet, but it is in the process. Farm Bill will have major implications for what happens with hemp and therefore CBD as well in the future. Um, I just McConnell. did a check on the Vermont registry. Yep. There are now over 300, over 300 registered wow. hemp permits in the state. On April 3rd, That's crazy. I got the list and we did it in early April. I sat right over there and we went through the whole map. Yep. That map is now irrelevant because it has doubled since April 3rd. That's insane. So uh, how sustainable it's going to be in the long, long, long term, we'll see. But it is definitely uh, a craze and it's yeah. blowing up right now. So it really is. Um, I'm excited because I think more people nationally are paying attention. And I think I, so. you've been doing you've been doing some traveling. I mean, do people know that yeah. know what's going on in the Vermont hemp scene? Uh, there's a buzz, you know, there's a buzz yeah. for sure. Non psychoactive, non psychoactive, <laughs> non medicinal. FDA not approved buzz. <laughs> yes. Well, that's right. And speaking of the FDA, well, maybe that, not. That was the other. Yeah, exactly. Approved. That's the other Apparently. big news. So yeah, we need to read more into this and stay tuned. We'll be doing some analysis on HeddyVermont.com about pharmaceutical companies receiving patents for cannabis-derived medicines. Which um, is that good? Is that bad? I feel in my soul. Both? I don't. I don't know. How about the fact that it's a British pharmaceutical company? Like yeah. it's not even an American, you know? Um, mm. Yeah. I, I. I don't know. It's pretty concerning. So we'll follow up on that. Mm -hmm. I would stay tuned. Gondrepreneur Project CBD. They always have some good analysis on Definitely. this stuff too. Yep. Uh, shout out to our dude Tim. We'll miss him. TG. He's heading over to New York pretty soon. TG. Thank you for all the great work. Love and miss you, brother. Um, let's talk a little bit about. July 1st and kind of, I, I was thinking about it. like, we, we've done one of these live streams before. We have. Back in the old studio. I, I think Cope. we were with Cope. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Man, talk about a power packed <laughs> episode. We'll have to a go lot of personality. Check that out. What do you think has, you know, changed, let's say like in the last <clears throat> two years, right? I mean, I mean, we've all kind of only been in this like formally in a business sense for, you know, two, three, three years ish. Yeah. So. What are some of the big things that you've seen change in like the, the Vermont scene and, and even more, right? Because you're yeah. getting even, even bigger. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, well, you just said it. The, the hemp registry in two years has, you know, quadrupled, quintupled, 
sept top? No, that's seven. But it did do that too. It's, it's gotten significantly larger. Um, so locally, there's a lot more people throwing their, uh, throwing their hat into the ring. And like, you know, God bless them for sure. Um, here's, my th here's my take. And I'm, I'd be interested to hear your opinion on this. So as a spectator of it all, do you think that this, uh, in part, that, that the explosion of the hemp industry in Vermont mm -hmm. is part Vermont protest? So hear me out. So, okay. so huh. we didn't, so there was a multitude of legalization bills that, sure. pa that, that failed year after year yeah. after year. And you and I were both down in Montpelier and we saw the frustration, we were part of it. Um, people were upset. Right. This is totally a theory. No, I like this. But like, as soon as this, as yeah. soon as the last, uh, you know, two years ago, when was that? Uh, H215, was yeah. it that bill? Uh, when that bill uh, got voted down, uh, I feel like a lot of farmers just said, can I swear? Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, uh, you sure can. Uh, so, so I wonder, what do you think? I think that a little bit of Vermont. No, protest? I think I think it's an I think it's an awesome take. I think there's protests and there's practicality, right? Yeah. So if you're in Maine or Massachusetts and you know how to grow good cannabis, you can find a job or you can be a caregiver, you know, and grow for multiple patients and be able to focus on on growing, right? Yeah. If you're in Vermont and you know how to grow cannabis and you want to do it publicly open, in part because of all these laws that have not passed, yeah. right? Then yeah, fuck it. I'll do CBD. That's I'm gonna what I get thought. started with CBD and hemp. Right? Yeah. You know, I mean, there was actually a school of thought a few <clears> years <throat> ago too that, in the eyes of the state, this is a theory that some people uh, clearly have had, is that if the state knows that I can grow CBD safely, controlled, tested, then maybe I will be more likely to receive one of these hypothetical permits. Interesting. If it ever does manifest and become real. I so I think that I do think that's part of it and mm -hmm. I think also the um you know the, part of it definitely being the protest too. Yeah. You know being like the yeah, I want to grow, I want to grow this plant. I know how to grow it. Sunlight's free all day, you know. All day. Um until 7:30 p.m. even. Uh so yeah, I do think I do definitely think that's yeah. part of it. Anyway, just you know? a spectator sort of uh theory. No, and that's been like a huge part of what's that's been basically the story of the last few years. I mean, we've looked at these events, mm -hmm. more and more people, you know, coming out, even especially when they're just like CBD focused. Totally. And we'll do that again in, in, in Burke in September. And, you know, it's been cool to kind of travel. Um, you know, I was down and I've been down in New York in the last month. You know, you've been down in the last month. Yeah. I've been down in Baltimore in the last month. Ooh. I've been all over the place. Yeah. Um, and so I've been kind of like checking out and, and you What's know. What's going on in Baltimore? Um, man, a whole lot, but you know, <laughs> starting to become aware, like the first wave of consciousness with it is like farmers markets, mm -hmm. uh, coffee people, beverage people, beverages, mm -hmm. yeah, beverage people, juice, um, massage, <laughs> massage and, and yoga people, yeah, yeah. right? And so like, that's the thing, if you're somebody who's at a farmers market and uh, shout out all of our out of state viewers, hopefully you'll find a Vermont con supplier for this, but like, if you're serving maple, you know, if you're serving something at a farmer's market, why wouldn't you add a CBD shot in there as an option for people? Why not? You know, I mean, the, I guess the only downside is the amount of questions that you then have to answer, right? Because that's really the yeah. biggest thing is There's that still a huge educational still, component and uh, that's gonna be, I think that's the next uh, sort of hurdle for, for non-Vermont states to, to get through, but it's, you know, but we were talking, I mean, we were talking about, you know, Brattleboro. Yeah. You know, we did our awesome. first CBD hemp farmer's market down yeah. in Brattleboro. Like, so not new to cannabis, <laughs> you know, down yeah. in like the Brattleboro Putney area. Right. It's like a little green emerald of Vermont, you know, totally. all that Route 30 stretch up there. Um, Beautiful. You know, but like the CBD stuff, it's still kind of just kicking off. And I think it like really is. half the people who came in, it was foot traffic. They saw the plants outside, which is always like arresting in a literal mm -hmm. sense not a yeah, <laughs> not yeah. not in a not in a police sense 
Um, I love that. You know, and it totally like engaged them, and like you could see people like they'd stop and they'd look and be like, "Oh yeah, that's what real." What is that? And then it'd be like, <laughs> and then they'd yeah. back the train on up, and then they'd go inside yep. and spend like a half an hour talking to all these people. And so I thought it was great. It, the, but it's still so much. You know, it's like kind of I, I compare it to beer sometimes with just realizing we're in this bubble in Vermont and in Burlington where, yeah, we've got like a dozen awesome little nano micro breweries, you know, spread around. Right. And as somebody who was a server at one of these breweries, like, yeah, I'll, we can talk, people who come in, they want to nerd out about beer. You know, we talk about Kolsch's and this and that and blah, blah, but you realize like 80% of the other people who like, you know, are coming from out of state and are interested, they're like, they're just pumped to drink the beer. And yeah. the Vermont beer is good. You know, and so it's still kind of that first wave of consciousness. Yeah, but you know? it's certainly a wave, and it's definitely cresting. Um, well, and, and so absolutely. let's talk about like uh, a little bit more about like canna planters because you know we're all in this in the early <coughs> nascent stages, um, yeah. and I feel like a big part of it is that everybody needs specific things, right? Like sure. advice, legal advice. Shout out Vermont Cannabis Solutions. Hi Tim. What's up, Tim? Um, and Andrew as well. Hi Andrew. Um, you know, everybody needs insurance, everybody needs legal, everybody needs a website, everybody needs graphics, right? So yeah. kind of, how'd you, how'd you start off in this? Um, what was your background and how'd you get into, the, get into the mix and how do you guys kind of work with these businesses as they start? Yeah, um, well, uh, I would just, you know, uh, so I came from a business development background. Uh, I worked at a, a local agency here in town um, for many years and before that, I did business development uh, for Apple in New York City. They're a small fruit company. <laughs> uh, so I, I, my, my passion really lies in uh, developing relationships. Um, since coming back to Vermont and working for this agency um, and becoming more involved in the Vermont cannabis community with you, with many of you hopefully watching here today, um, you know, it was clear that, you know, I needed to find my way into this thing. Um, and I think like a lot of people, the first thing I wanted, I, I thought about doing was a dispensary, right? This was years ago when uh, the first uh, legalization bill mm. uh, came up. Uh, I don't remember which one it was. Um, so I uh, went out to Colorado and did my due diligence, you know, trying to figure out um, you know, taking meetings and, and meeting uh, dispensary managers and bud tenders and all, all that sort of thing. Um, try to figure out if that was an opportunity. And the one thing I noticed while I was out there, even out in Colorado where, you know, the cannabis industry is ginormous, um, none of them looked really good. They're, none of them, I feel like it was all very rushed. Um, there was no really distinguishable brands. The experience was kind of icky. The uh, mm. packaging looked, you know, like yeah. I would have gotten it in college. So that really stuck out to me. And in coming back, I thought, well, the opportunity lies in developing a brand around um, this thing and trying to build that first and make it look classy and, and really build something. So that's Lifted VT. That's where that came from. Um, yeah, that's be, actually the first time that we, yeah, we, we connected was like through Instagram, through Instagram. And so many and so many yeah. people was like, yo, who's Lifted VT? Like, yeah, so Lifted VT became an it's exercise. Awesome dog and these great boomerangs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, exactly. It became uh, an exercise in building a brand content strategy. And, you know, it was mostly it, it's it's completely cannabis focused. Uh, it's, you know, a, a, a medical <laughs> yeah, a medical profile. Yeah, sure. uh, it's pictures of my dog and and me smoking weed or the weed I'm smoking. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so that that uh, that's where that started. Uh, dispensary never happened, of course. Um, but you know, I realized this was around the time when the CBD thing started to really happen, and um, I thought, well, I've done this. Um, you know, lifted was a, a success, and you know, to to some extent, and I think that probably this is a service that I can offer. Furthermore, we live in Burlington, home of dealer.com, um, which, you know, uh, is one of the greatest business models of all time. Um, and I thought that in addition to, um, you know, looking great with a powerful brand and, and cool products that looked really awesome, that, you know, having the full package and including websites was equally as important. So yeah. um, taking that approach with the dealer model where it's sort of just move on in to your website and... Uh, 
we'll take care of the whole thing. And um, yeah, so how do you come in? Because like, you know, we have there's there's a, a bunch of different clients we could we could talk about. But let's sure. say you know like Family Farm, like right. So let's say like NEK Hemp. Yeah. You know, so let's say you go at the most grassroots level. You're talking to people who are who are farmers. Yeah. You know, who have ideas kind of for their products. Like, yeah. What kind of questions are you asking them to help figure out how they want to, you know, identify and, yeah. and put their brand out there? Well, you that's know, I mean, they're, and, and they're a great example because um, they are true farmers in the sense, like generationally, they've been, you know, up in the Northeast Kingdom for a long time. Um, so their roots lie in Northern Vermont and their history lies in agriculture. So. Um, they're, they're a really good example. So they, there all, you go. The, all the way, all the way up there. Boom, That's right. all the way up there. Uh, they uh, decided a few years ago to stop haying and to plant a, a bunch of hemp. And uh, it's gone pretty well for them. They've, um, you know, introduced, uh, we didn't help them too much with product development, but we have taken their brand, which, um, you know, to their credit has done them very well. Um, but you know, needed needed a little bit of uh, of love, and that's what we did to it. We just gave it some love, and, and we brought it to the next level. So, um, you know, we we took care of all their packaging, and mm -hmm. their labels are we're about to print them. They right. look amazing. So the cross section of people who know how to grow cannabis really well yep. outdoors and spend time doing it, and the cross section of people who yes. know how to you know even just do technical design right and give you a graphic that you can put on a website like. Well, Step one, you want to make an Instagram page and a website. Right. Like somebody's, you got to get that logo somewhere, and somebody's totally. got to put it on the Facebook page, and on the Instagram profile, and you know, give you all those pointers about like, hey, and you probably even just have to like call people and say like, hey, add to your story today. Like totally. I know you're out there in the fields walking around with four foot yes. plants. Like, take a picture, <laughs> Karen. If you're watching, update right. your Facebook profile. <laughs> I've, I've been telling you for weeks. Um, <laughs> Uh, yes, and furthermore, just in terms of what, what you were saying about, you know, people out in the fields, that's what they want to do. That's what I, I want them to do. My clients, all of them, and I work with a lot of people in Vermont, and they all do amazing things, and they have really, really unique products, all of them. Um, and that's what they're really good at, um, and that's what I want them to focus on. I want them to focus on putting plants in the ground, and I want them to focus on, uh, you know, uh, making those great products. I don't want them to feel anxious about their website or, you know, right. that their brand, you know, you know, I really need to make a logo. Like, these are things that we can do. So we take that hat off them um, gladly. Um, and so far, it's been pretty good. Yeah. yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, uh, and let's, all right, so let's talk about the next. Well, I just want to talk about yeah. Brattleboro. Oh, yeah, yeah, please. So, one of our clients is Vermont Hepicurian, who uh, uh, had their grand opening the day before Scott, the. Thank you very much. Uh, awesome. Yep, a uh, 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 heady member, right? Mm -hmm. um, he uh, had his grand opening the day before the hemp market, um, and I would say Scott is is one of those guys who's really helping um, change uh, the perception of uh, hemp and hemp brands in Southern Vermont, and you know. Very much so. Cirrus is down there too, and they're crushing it, and um, for sure. But this last weekend, you know, Scott S Scott took it home. Yeah, uh, and it was great to see him in action. Like uh, he knows his stuff, and 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 that's the thing. People want to be educated. You know, they're sick of being on pills. They're sick of right. whatever. Um, well, and so. it's still early. It's still early too, right? Like I think a lot of people have anxiety. They're like, oh, I'm missing. I'm missing out on getting into like the weed biz, right? Yeah. You know, in like the last few years, like you know, people have that anxiety. They yeah. want to get in, but it's like it's still so many new people coming in, right? You know, and people competing in making each other better. I think. I think so. And ideally, not you know, knocking each other off the same shelves, right? No. And that's kind of the part where you talk about like, you know, spreading the word, spreading the gospel of Vermont cannabis to these other states, and you know, especially right now when people in Baltimore don't necessarily know what CBD is, but they know if it's from Vermont that it's got to be better. You know, Definitely. and that's like, that's where we're at as a state, thankfully. I was in you know? New York this uh, last Tuesday uh, for a cannabis networking event. And I went into a bodega to get a sandwich after the event. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were selling CBD in there. Um, 
Pizza Rat brand CBD. <laughs> Basically, and it was right next to the five hour energy drink and it looked, you know, it was, you know, wrapped, it was right next to the ginseng sex pills right, and right. Like that whole thing. So, um, yeah, it's, it's not surprising to me that, you know, the, the, the perception still, still, there's still some work to do. Yeah. For sure. But it's happening and, and I'm really proud to be a part of uh, the way Vermont, I think, is shaping the, the, this industry. And I, again, you know, it's like people come, people come to these events, you go to the Brattleboro CBD hemp market and like the stuff that you see is like really well, well designed and well done. And, yeah. you know, we hope that, you know, we'll see, we'll see what's on the inside. You know, I mean, with, yeah. more, with more and more testing and regulation in the state kind of getting more involved in that, yep. um, you know, that is potentially going to be some, 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 some rocky waters maybe. And so I don't think it's unlikely that we'll see Vermont cannabis companies, you know, that are going to have to tune their processes, right? And I That's don't think what we it's, want. it's hopefully not going to be a negative thing, but if that Vermont brand is going to mean it's, that it's a premium price, you know, then it's got to, it's got to be a premium product. I, I totally know? agree. Yeah. And I think, I think we've gotten off to a really, really good start for I, sure. Dude, I'm thir- I, probably like a lot of these people. I'm thirsty as hell. Can you please tell me what's in these? Can you please tell yeah. me what's in these bottles? Because I'm, so- <laughs> I'm very intrigued, not only because um, Are they cold? of the beautiful packaging. Well, oh, not yet. Yeah, yeah. Got well, ice we'll talk too, about but, that. <laughs> well, yeah. So, but also, you okay. know, kind of what's what's the story with yeah, this? Yeah. Because you're you're a brand building guy, and now you've got your own kind of product, right? Yeah, for sure. So, um, here's the story. Uh, so, a million years ago. So, I'm a washed up rock and roll star. Did you know that? I well, you mentioned earlier something something my band. You yeah, kind of yeah. just dropped it in there. So, yeah, so I wanted to wait till we were on here I'm, to ask who I'm your a, band was, yeah. so you could. So I'm a washed up, uh, retired, former, uh, almost rock and roll star. Uh, I was in a band from Vermont many years ago uh, called The Casual Fiasco. Um, that name. Google us. Such a I, I doubt, I think, we, no, don't, please don't. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, yeah, so uh, in my band was, we had two Joshes. So Josh one, we'll call him, um, played the bass um, and now, a, a, almost a dozen years later, we're working together again, and he's doing design work for us. And he did he did this logo. I don't know what camera can I can I look at? Whatever. Oh yeah, right here, right, right here, here in front. Yeah, dead center. So he did this logo for our friends at Rockville Market Farm, who are starting a CBD company called Fields of Fire, um, and we did this logo. So Josh Wan, my former bass player, is you know he, we've come back full circle. Josh Two, who uh, played the drums for my band, so together they were the, the Joshes. Uh, Josh Two uh, owns a co-pack, which is an industrial kitchen um, in Williston. So we've come and, and, you know, we've all been friends for many years. The, you know, the band ended very, it was fine. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> Not too much drama, just the uh, uh, normal amount of drama. Yeah. Uh, so Josh too owns this kitchen uh, called A Drop of Joy in Williston, um, and he does co-packing for Aquavite Tea, and he does flavor development for Aquavite Tea, and he works for the Farmhouse Group, and he does all this great stuff. Uh, and he knows that I love soda. Yep. <laughs> so soda may be a bad word, uh, but it's not for us. So uh, Josh, so from, delicious man. Everybody loves uh, it. Yeah, it's everybody just a loves guilty, soda. It's, it's just, just a, a guilty, guilty pleasure. Yeah, it's just- uh, so Josh and I, Josh has been talking to me for years about starting a soda company, and finally I, I said, okay, let's do it. So as if I didn't have enough to do already, we have started a soda company. Okay, so that's where Josh too comes back full circle. Hence the sodas. So we started this brand, Local Sweet, and I was just talking about. I just spent the last however minutes talking about branding and I'm coming at you with a unbranded bottle with a Avery label on it. But this is how we all start. Yeah. I'm my I'm an example of my own clients, right. all of them. They all come to me with an Avery label. Yeah. So we're working on this. <laughs> Shout out to Mike Kin. What's up, Mike? Thanks for doing our logo. You're awesome. Uh, so we developed two sodas. Uh, and eventually it'll be a CBD product, I'm sure. But for now, we're making delicious sodas. So yeah, that's the, the surprise. That's the surprise Shyamalan twist. Yes. That there's, there's no weed there's in no, soda. These, these are just soda. These are just drinks. It's, it's just, just juice. It's just juice. <laughs> uh, so the company is called Local Sweet. Um, and uh, it's all, all the sodas are sweetened with local products. So, uh, for example, this is our pineapple ginger ale. 
Um, and it's got lemon and lime juice, and it is sweetened with uh, maple syrup, for sure. Um, and this one is a mind bender, and it is a Tulsi rose um, sweetened with local love, honey. Love, love Tulsi. Yeah, it's our holy basil rose, and well it done. is going to blow your mind. So okay. do, you want, do you want to try some? So badly. All right, I, I, so really, I really do have uh, cotton mouth. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, we had a good safety meeting pr prior to this. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay, so I don't know if the camera can see, but so these are real food sodas. There's no sugar added uh, beyond the maple syrup. So all the good stuff's at the bottom, so we're just going to... I, I believe agitate, right? Agitate Yeah, generally. but that is trademarked by Kyle oh, Brewer okay. Curum, patent, oh. patent pending. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, agitate gently. All uh, right. So. Okay, yeah, so that's our pineapple ginger ale. I brought ice. Agitate gradually, yeah. <laughs> uh, so local ice. Lo lo this is only the finest local ice. I even brought my own cups because of how budget this live stream show is. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Okay. Hey. So our pineapple ginger ale. Oh man. Gingery, yeah. right? Yes, actual okay. ginger. Yes, this yes. is there's real ginger in this. For sure. And I'm gonna if you don't mind, I'll share some with you. Yeah, please do. I do I do have some humble roots uh, CBD tincture out in the car oh, too. We can so just we, dose this we up. could always do yeah. Yeah. So cheers. Yeah. Local sweet. Yeah. Um, cheers. we're just on Instagram right now, local sweet VT. Uh, we're selling this at the Waitsfield Farmers Market right now, and that's it, but we'll be in places. Mm. Man, see I really like I like ginger. Live stream fans who saw the Northern Spirulina show will know. This is great though. Just enough ginger. A little bit of cinnamon good, in there, the a little spice, mm -hmm. a, and like the pineapple is just like, it's, it's just like an aromatic pineapple. It's awesome, right? It burns it off. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, are you, uh, <laughs> so, are you going to bring some samples for, wow, uh, we'll have to figure it out for July 1st. I might have to bring first. a keg, yeah, I might have yeah, to bring we'll a keg of this. Uh, that's not a bad idea. Well, we'll have to smuggle it in, we'll have to smuggle it in and put it in the VIP, so no glass bottles on July 1st. No, no, there no. There you no. go. That's one, yeah. one, of, one of the things we'll end the show one of the with. Things. The few things, the things you need to know for July 1st. Stay tuned because I am going to uh, drop some knowledge. I got another Shyamalan twist too. Oh my too. God. So good. Is that like, I mean, is that, it's biased, no, I would, but I, it is really good. No, I would, I would actually say, plus I've never had the pineapple ginger combo. It's awesome. Before. Should we try yeah. the other one? Absolutely. All right. This one yeah. is different. Um, mm. We need to uh, I do like clear it. the palate. So same idea. So this is a holy basil rose, lemon. And you said you're in farm. You're in the farmers market. Yeah, in uh, Waitsfield, right? In Waitsfield. Now. Yeah, it's okay. great. What's that process? What's that process like? You know, now as somebody who's going through it, like, how do you go yeah. from I have I've got whatever ten cases of this to, hey, uh, sir or ma'am. May I please sell my shit at your co-op or at your, you know, at your whatever? Like, what's that approach like? Well, I'm not a bad salesperson. Either. No, that's that's definitely that's <laughs> definitely true. But I'm saying, like, what what do people do? Like, yeah, what do you totally. tell your clients to do? I mean, you again, that's what you do. You it's, make the call on their behalf. Listen, it's about <laughs> believing. Hmm. That's it. I mean, having a good product is important. Uh, having a really good brand is important. Being passionate about your good product and your good brand. Most important, love what you do, right? Like, yeah. like love what you do. Yeah. So, I, I mean, that sounds foofy, but it's not. I mean, I, that is what I tell my clients. Uh, I also tell them to hustle their asses off and sell, 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 sell. Why are you watching this live stream? Get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> and I think they mostly, I, I know that they definitely do. I mean, especially, I mentioned Kyle, shout out Creek Valley. Oh my God. Cheers on this. This one's crazy. Yeah, this is really, this is really, really unique. I don't know if people are familiar with Tulsi. I love Tulsi tea. If you're not, if you haven't had Tulsi tea, absolutely drink it. It's Thank crazy. you to uh, uh, Alexander. She's a friend um, from, who used to be part of Tulsi tea house in Montpelier. Gave me my first bag of Tulsi tea. Got it. Yeah, put me on. That's who put me on. Like, <laughs> Turn here, you here, on kid, here, kid, try this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, so <laughs> this is all Josh too. He is a flavor wizard. Um, it's sort of like back in this, and that's the weirdest thing is. It's not too sweet either. It's not too sweet. Yeah, and it's, it's, more super, like a, it's more like a tea. Yeah. But it's still got a little carbonation in it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like everything refreshing. I like about the tea. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Uh, creating, uh, making recipes is a lot like, it reminds me of being in a band. 
um, and sitting in the studio, which for any- Hold on. It's the most, no, it's the, well, yes, Hold but <laughs> it's the most boring thing ever. Unless you're the one in the studio doing the thing, it's the most boring thing ever. So I sit there in the kitchen and I just sort of cheer Josh on. Yes, Josh, <laughs> make that recipe. Give yeah. me a drink. And then he's like, you know, is this good? And I'm like, you know, need salt. And he's like, what? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so it's just fun to watch him do it. And, and uh, that's well, been the most, the most rewarding part. It's, is. it's funny, too, because, like, you know, I have a, I, I brought up my friend Mark earlier. Shout out to Honey Twist. You know, at the craft beer cellar in Waterbury. Yep. And he's a Home, uh, Cicerone certified. You what know, at some mean? crazy high level. So that's like, if you're wine tasting, if you're a sommelier, oh. or if you're a beer taster, yes, you go take these classes and you get level up. And interesting, um, it's it is because like it's such a specific, you know, skill to have, right? And like this refined palate, and some of the people have, some that they learn. But the obvious question, as somebody who's trying to plan a grower's cup. Mm -hmm. is what are the qualifications? What makes you, you mm. know, what makes you good to judge oh my God. with the, uh, with the, with the, weed, with the weed stuff? Is, no, no, not you. I'm not talking about this product. No, this is no brainer. I definitely like this. No, I meant 10 you, out 10 you would need buy. me to be a judge uh, because if that's what we're getting <laughs> on, the here, on the record, on the record, I guess, no, I was, yes, yes, Eli, yes, yes, I sure. accept. Give me yeah. my rose. <laughs> right. Ex yeah. My rose, huge judges pack of weed. No, like, what do you think that's going to be? I mean, that, that would be a phenomenal business for somebody to start, right? Is like qualify you as trained to be the weed taster. And then somebody pays you thousands of dollars to go through your course. And now you're a certified. I think that, that guy exists, right? Or did they, they shut down the cannabis? So there was somebody in Agua. Uh, yes. That guy, yes. right? Um, yeah. And there's a company in, I, I think I heard this on the Gondrepreneur podcast or maybe Canada Insider. Bud Tender. Uh, uh, there's a guy who did Bud the, uh, but there is actually a course out in Denver, I think, that you can do to go through it. And it'll be like, is. yeah, yeah. Of course, course there of is. Of course there is. For a small fee yeah. of $10 million. Yeah. What do you think? So you've, you've seen the scene in other states. What do yeah. we need to... I've been talking with a lot of California people lately. Oh. And we'll be doing some interviews. How fancy. Eli. Yeah, right. Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> no, it's cool. They're repatriating to Vermont because they're like, oh, cool shit's going to happen here. Totally. But a lot, of them, a lot of them are also saying, like, California fucking blew it and California really screwed up and California has done this wrong or done this right or whatever. So as somebody who's been around and kind yeah. of seen the scene, I mean, you were inspired by some of the, we won't say CD, but maybe lower effort marketing. That's yes. a really good PC. I, I, lower I effort was. marketing to, yeah, you were kind of inspired it was a by motivation, that. motivation, yeah. But like, what do you think we can pick up from these other scenes in other states and not do <sighs> here in Vermont? Wow, that's a really good question. And I. I mean, it must be the Tulsi. It's the Tulsi. It's medicine. making my brain feel so good. Yeah, local is. sweet. Add <laughs> local sweet VT. Um, well, so we, we're working with a, a few companies in California. We just uh, finished uh, doing some branding for a company called the White Mountain Cannabis Club. Which are there White Mountains in California? I mean, snow snow capped, but but there aren't the White Mountains, right? Those are in New Hampshire, right? Okay, I don't know. So they're the I, I probably you've got a, should you've have got a legal, asked you've them. Got a legal position. I didn't right. want to ask them because <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the White Mountain Cannabis uh, Company in LA, uh, LA most famous for its White Mountains, sure. um, but they are. I think they are one of the. Uh, one of one of those companies who is focusing on on their on their brand as as much as possible so there's saturation uh, for sure in mm -hmm. California definitely and like you know stores so haven't like even too, opened yet. too many companies too oh, much absolutely. too many products too uh, much stuff I mean out there. You, uh, I mean I've already heard the stories I'm sure you have too about the the amount of cannabis that is about to hit a recreational market is oh, yeah. going to dis d completely destroy the uh, the the value of it. Uh, the, Farmers you know. out there who are getting you know fifteen hundred fifteen hundred dollars a pound last year this year getting six hundred dollars a pound. Crazy. That you is know, crazy to me. When it costs four hundred a pound to produce it. So you know? this is inevitably going to be a problem. But um, this this is. This is capitalism. This is how it works. Uh, it's a tough one. I know, man. Supply, well, it's, you know, supply control is like, it's a big thing with us, right? I mean, and that's well, why. Oregon just went through this whole thing, too. So, right. Um, and I think Maine has a maximum statewide canopy limit. That is an important that thing. That they're sort of. And so it, it's interesting because you don't want to, like, you don't want to restrict it and you don't want to make it so that 
you know, if there's only 100,000 square feet of canopy in the state, who is going to have access to that? Well, it certainly makes it more competitive. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. And it's, I mean, I'm not asking Stay you like tuned, you have, folks. I, right, exactly. We'll I'm be not back after these messages. <laughs> not that you have the answers to this. This is just like these questions that I kind of think about when we get into like the, the details of the, of the policy stuff. Um, I'm going to pop on here and see. We got Call any, in now, folks. We're taking calls live. We got any questions? Oh, this is a good <laughs> shout out from uh, Patricia, the Women of Cannabis event at Clover Gift Shop. Don't forget. On Wednesday. St. Lawrence alumni. Offering just to come like out. this guy. Oh yeah, nice. Yes. Slow, huh? And we keep it we keep it tight. Um, very good question on opinions of the cannabis job market shaping up in uh, the next few weeks. Uh, <laughs> in the next few weeks, it's, I need a job. Is July first gonna? I mean, we we're, we talk about this with the event, right? Like, and with the growers cups, like. So without getting too specific, I have gotten many many phone calls from Vermonters who want to brand THC products, mm -hmm. and they want you know. Uh, they know they can't sell them. They know they but can't they sell them. But they at least want to start creating. They want to build their brand. A package for their. Totally. For their thing. Totally. So at the very least, uh -huh. people, you're going to get some really good looking, free products. For the next at least year right and to be <laughs> honest it seems like overall that's a huge net positive i think that so people by the time because i do think that this industry regulates itself better than a lot of other no, no. ones and that like except for the testing which is not widely available which shout out to jess Allo from the free press pointing out today that the cops aren't actually able to do any of the testing uh, on edible products because they just decided not to take take care of that years ago uh, when the medical program needed it, it's okay. Um, but you know, I mean, people are kind of getting ready themselves. And I wonder about what kind of dosages people are making, you know, like what kind of techniques they're using. Like, how do we know that that well, really good brownie that is in a bomb ass package, you know, that says it's 20 milligrams? Like, I trust the person who's giving it to me. Yeah, but you And I'm not afraid of getting, I'm not afraid of getting, you know, a 40 milligram one. You know, personally, I'll be all right. Yeah, you'll, you'll live. <clears throat> right? You know, but... You um, raise a really good question. Yeah, and, like, what do you, you yeah, know... Yeah, because there's no regulation. And I think so, uh, nor should there be. And, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no established market. So, um, But I think these are some of the problems. Uh, these, are, these are some of the questions that the exploding CBD market is, go, is going to answer, is answering. You know, I think uh, in addition to... Um, you know the amazingness of just the industry itself um, that it is sort of setting the stage for uh, the next thing right. which is a recreational marketplace so there's very little in fact zero regulation on uh, CBD packaging right now other and there's than really not no... making claims like right. that's the only thing mm -hmm. um, but we still try to you know at Canna planners we still you know, it's part of best practice to, uh, you know, in include as much information as possible. And so people, I mean, you know, there are, I mean, there are medical dispensaries are opening up multiple locations. So we do know that there are some medical jobs opening up just as oh, yeah, dispensaries jobs. Anyway, so, yeah. can continue to grow too. Well, I, I, at least I want to answer that question because I thought uh, yeah, it was yeah, a good no, one. I think because, it's a good question, yes. You know, it's like you're not going to be able to go apply at your local, uh, your local dispensary, you know, and there will be a lot of people who it, it's going to depend on how risk averse you are. Okay, right? so we talked about this with Tim on this very on this very couch. Yep. Um, you know, that's a calculation everybody's got to make, right? Like, do I want to have my company selling T-shirts by delivery? You know, do I want to start a T-shirt delivery company? You know, and give people weed and have really popular, expensive T-shirts. <laughs> you know, I do I want to do a? I mean, I've heard about you know all the shit that people do like at trade <laughs> shows, like you know, sell autographs, like. I, it's actually pretty awesome. I would definitely autograph the first legal weed I was gifted. A pack. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and then DC people do like sell you a three hundred dollar empty plastic bag. Yeah. On Craigslist or something. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, it, it seems like weed, a mixed bag because <laughs> people are gonna do all that, and it's almost like if well, you're if you're too slick and you're too public, then you're then you're kind of an easier target, right? So, so let me just say this: like, while I am. Total. I, I'm so happy that we are at this point. I'm I'm ecstatic that it's happening. The problem with uh, doing it this way is that 
um, th it does create these loopholes. Like, and they're not they're they're not loopholes. There's the, you know they're hula hoop sized loopholes. These are not you know yeah. th there's going to be an, uh, so so what comes with sort of a, a flim flammy legalization um, without established regulation, without an established marketplace is loopholes and um, you know, so be it. And I do want to tell people that um, <clears throat> we are going to, on July 1st, if you come out to the event, the ACLU is going to be there. Uh, Tim from Vermont Cannabis Solutions is going to be there. We're actually going to do a workshop about knowing your rights. I'm going to be, I don't know anything about my rights. <laughs> well, that's a good Am reason. I under arrest? That's a good reason for you to come too, right? I mean, to there are basic levels and, you know, we, I, was, I was literally talking about this with, it was really surreal scene. Big shout out to Chocolate Thunder Security. Mikey for making the drive out to Johnson today. Mikey and I went to the Lamoille County Sheriff's Department and uh, it was funny because, you know, like we go in and like walk downstairs and like down this other hallway and it's like, oh shit, where am I going right now? And I'm like, well, Mikey's with me at least this time. So, you know, we got at least got a shot at making it out yeah, of here. Yeah, yeah, you'll be all and right. And we come in and there's like the two fire guys, the fire chiefs there, the EMS, you know, like water rescue guys there, like uh, Chief uh, Sheriff Mark who was there detective, state police, you know, deputy, 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 and like all of us. And it was cool because we actually, we sat down and we were talking about sort of how the event's gonna be laid out and the planning and security and all that kind of stuff. A lot of thought has gone into this. Um, and then afterwards we went out and we walked around the grounds and kind of showed them we like, you know, we'll have you guys over here making sure the road's good. We're gonna have a volunteer here, security by the box office. And then we were kind of just all hanging out like shooting the shit talking about you know what's happening and it was like Keith and I shout out to Keith um, <clears throat> and Mikey you know talking with people that we'd never talk with about cannabis if it weren't for this you know and just the legitimate concern that they express you know is just the road safety and the, and the and the question of the test you know and I really think in like three years there will be a data master type test the same way that there is for you know a breathalyzer like that'll probably exist for weed in the next few years. Like I know people in MIT and people, you know, out west and like Stanford, like there's a lot. If you're the first person who develops this, there are a million police departments across the country that are gonna need to buy one of these things. Yeah, definitely. Um, but you know, like that's kind of their, their discomfort is like, you know, we don't have a way to, to test, you know, people on the road. And you know, their reaction was, was good. Loophole. You know, they're smart, they're smart. You know, these guys know that they've got more <clears throat> other things to worry about, but these genuine, you know, kind of concerns. There's still, for and sure, it's gonna a public be a safety lot of, concern. Yeah. yeah, and so it was, you know, it, it's just been like, that's been honestly the best part of planning this. There have been a couple, and some of the volunteers that we've gotten to meet have been awesome. we interviewing some, they're gonna blow your mind. You know, like farmers who hated weed and then, you know, ended up getting into our, it's, it's wild. But the process of going through this and like talking with public safety and acknowledging, hey, we have the same shared interest here neither one of us want there to be something bad that happens at this event we want everybody to get there safe we want them all to you know park there and camp out overnight or take the free shuttle we have a free shuttle leaving from here at the Hedy vermont studios um the jam creative studios um you know and it's like same thing you know yeah. so why shouldn't we just because you're a police officer and i'm planning a cannabis event you know why shouldn't we work together and talk about where we want to have our security and how we're going to keep everybody safe at this thing. And they've got questions, you know, and they want to ask questions and not feel like they're, you know, uh, like, they're, like they're dumb or something and feel like they have people who are responsible working with them. So, uh, you know, politically, politically speaking, the, we got a lot of work to do, you know, with Department of Public Safety, I think. But Education. On, the, on, the ground, on the ground level, um, I would encourage people, you know, that's some free advice that I'll, that I'll give you if you're somebody who's a cannabis entrepreneur, especially if you're somebody who's thinking about cannabis events. Go talk to your select board. You know, yeah. the meetings, you can show up. You don't even have to get on the agenda. Just go up to them afterwards. You know, show up towards the end or, you know, show up and stay for the whole thing. And go up and talk to them and say, hey, you know, um, I'd like to have, I'm thinking about having an event or I want to know how this is going to work. Um, and there are a couple other, I've heard of a few other events that are going on on July 1st too. That'll be There's interesting. Two. There's a guy, uh, um, the the uh, I, they called it the original Green Mountain Cannabis Music Festival, I believe, uh, down in Dover, Vermont. I'll give a free plug because Sandy was nice enough to call me up, and uh, we had a good conversation, sort of brothers in arms, kind of planning those. Like, oh, what the cops tell you? All right, what the cops tell you? You know, like, <laughs> um, 
they're doing a big event down there in Dover. It'd be interesting to see. I just heard today that somebody's doing an event in Waterbury, oh. where they're going to charge uh, they're going to charge fifty dollars for a parking pass. And then you're oh. gonna come and and then you're gonna come and get all kinds of free gifts, I guess. Awesome. Um, it'll be interesting to see, and you know, I guess I'll kind as of, it should be. These are exactly the things yeah. that should be happening. This should be like bringing the community tighter together. You know, like I'm, I'm psyched that there's multiple events happening because th this is a big state. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and it needs to be a celebration. This is a this is a big big step uh, for us. And it's crazy. you know, and like you said, you know, like. For so many reasons, cannabis is, is really, really cool. But this kind of just historic <laughs> opportunity yeah. and just the time we're living in, like, you know, this is never going to happen again. No. In history, not like this, not here at this place with all of us as Vermonters who get to participate. So, you know, how cool is that, man? Yeah. Weed oh. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, I'll, I'll kind of wrap it up tonight. I'll let people drop a few more questions on here for Will. <clears throat> If they got jobs, them. there's so many jobs happening. By the way, just just to go back to that real quick. Yeah. So, uh, farm labor, tons of farms. Holy shit! Oh my god! Like yeah. Plant like right now. If you needed a job right now, like there are thousands and thousands and thousands of plants being put into the earth in this state right now. Like over the last, you know, probably starting uh, maybe two weeks ago, but still happening now because of there. There's so many. Uh, so farm labors. Uh, there's marketing jobs. Uh, we're looking mm -hmm. for freelance people. So designers, web developers, hey. hit me up. Like, yeah. we're growing like gangbusters. Uh, uh, there's lots of cannabis companies nationally and internationally. We just signed our first international client Ooh. out of Denmark. Ooh. International, baby. Uh, so, wow. uh, yeah, like there's marketing uh, uh, and problem solvers. That's what we really need. Like, I, I, I don't know what specific job that is, but there's problems in this industry, um, banking and, uh, and and distribution and on and on that um, need solutions. So if you're a smart person, start your own company. Communications, being good at communications. Yes. Being able to speak both the languages. Being able, if you know a lot about cannabis. If you, you speak can also, French. Yes. Is that oh, actually mean? that, well, I mean that, that too, you know, for those <laughs> of us who are up here by Quebec. Oh my God, that's um, happening too. Are you kidding? That's happening. It's that just happened. We can't, that's another, that's oh, a whole that's gonna other be a whole, live stream. Oh, we're, we're going to take, we're going to take it out. I'll, I'll be the live stream from the, uh, from the club in downtown Montreal. I'm there with you. The, uh, yeah, the 3.30 a.m. live stream. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just pull back the curtain. <laughs> like, hey, what's up, everybody? Um, all so, right, well, let me, uh, let me wrap tonight with uh, a few things that you need to know about this here July 1st legalization celebration. So I'll give you a couple things that uh, you need to know. I really should have written these down, but I've been thinking a lot about them. Um, so we'll just sort of start open-ended list here, right? Um, one, it's going to be historic. Yeah. Man, this is never going to happen again here in the state of Vermont. So that in itself deserves to be recognized. It's not the first time people are going to smoke weed at a concert. Not the first time people are going to no. smoke uh, weed or eat edibles outside somewhere. No. Laws have changed, social norms have changed. That happened because of you, because of you, Me? because of all of us together um, making it happen. So it's important to recognize that. That's yes. what we are celebrating on July 1st. That is very cool. Very uh, cool. Secondly, this event itself, it's gonna be, it's gonna be rugged. Mm. It is going to be authentic. It's gonna be, I don't know who actually coined this, the Vermont as fuck phrase. <laughs> Twiddle? I've seen, I've seen it. it. I don't know. It, it actually might have been. Shout out to Wiener. He's, I see him post about it all the time. But like, um, perma, the permaculture farm is is beautiful. Yeah. We are going to have. It's not going to be mowed out and manicured like an English garden. That's not the point at all. Oh, I'm not going. So there. we are going to have a chance to. You're going to have a chance to walk around barefoot. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, which brings me to my next big point. Don't forget sunscreen. to bring a towel. Don't forget <laughs> to bring a towel. And also the sunscreen. Towely. It's going to be like 95 degrees, and yes. the Lamoille River runs right <laughs> next to this here farm. A river runs through. So it's we have got a beach, and I won't be surprised if there are a couple hundred people out there on the beach. Swimming? Swimming, floating, doing all kinds of flotillas. Floating, all kinds of flotillas. <laughs> Uh, hang out again. It's going to be like over 100 with a heat index, so you're going to want to be hanging out 
in that beach. You will start be the sweating. diet now. You got plenty of time. Totally. You so get that beach don't forget vibe. to bring a towel. You, this <laughs> all sounds exciting, and this all sounds great, but this is going to be a capped event. We do not have room for 5,000 people. Well, we, 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 we could potentially, but uh, there's something in Vermont. If you have a gathering of more than 2,000 people, you need what is called an assembly permit. Something you get with the state, it requires a lot of extra steps for planning. Even if you're doing a private event, you need an assembly permit. So that means that there are only going to be 2,000 heady Vermonters at this shindig on July 1st. Perfect amount of that. This is going to be uh, just enough to hire a second sheriff's deputy, so we made sure we hit that cap. Um, but it's going to be a great number. We've got the space is going to be perfect for that amount of people. So if you're interested in doing this, don't wait. Don't wait. I know. We're all procrastinators. I had a great, great joke at the sheriff's office today about potheads really are procrastinators. It's so true. Don't wait. <laughs> Buy a membership now. Buy tickets now. If you need a bulk ticket because you want to get some for all of your clients or you want to get some for all of your companies, um, all your friends, hit us up and we can do a bulk deal if you'd like. But uh, get them now because um, we will have a limited number on site. But once we hit that magic number, not going to be able to, to let you in. You're out. Because those fines are quite large. And I'd like this to be the first, not the last time, that we do one of these big events. And our track record is knock on wood. Pretty good. Pretty good so far. Pretty so we good. work hard to plan things out, be ready, all this. So again, big point. Buy a ticket now. It's going to be capped. It's going to sell out. It's going to fill up. And I do not want to turn you away. I will. I will. Will I you will. personally I'll be fill. turning people away? Yeah. Yeah. There you go, people. That's worth the that's worth the trip. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Come get personally turned away by Eli that's Harrington, <laughs> founder of Hedy Vermont. Man, that's how I'm going to spend my. I, I'll do that. My July first, so that we can make this happen. It's well worth it. I learned how to drive a trencher today. What you know, is a trencher, Eli? It's, it's what you use to. Uh, it's trench. What you use to, yeah, yeah. It's literally. People call it a uh, a ditch witch. Ah, the That's the nomenclature witch. around the. Uh, now I know exactly. If you hang what out around the farm about. and garden, you'll you'll pick up some of these. A ditch witch. Some of these words. Yep, yep. So <laughs> I, uh, yeah, and that's how we're going to lay the uh, electricity from the stage to the sound booth. Via which, ditch. Which this electricity is all coming via solar power. So there are going to be no gas generators at this event. Part of Not the commitment to making this super eco-friendly, uh, walking the walk, as it were keeping our hosts happy, and ideally leaving this property in even better shape than we found it. Mm, that's Imagine very that. Boy Scoutish of you. Oh, well, you know what's even more Boy Scoutish <laughs> than solar power, Will? <laughs> composting toilets. Yay! Composting. Have you ever seen a composting toilet? I have, actually. You have? They're gross. But what? they're great for the environment. <laughs> I don't know what kind of composting toilet you've talked about, <laughs> but I'll guarantee you this, you've never seen a composting toilet like you're going to see uh, at July 1st. I can't, that's the only reason you know? I'm going. <laughs> yeah, you know what, it was 10 years ago that I was living in China and I've been just dying to do the floating shit thing ever since then, you know, so I'm, I'm excited I that we're going to have Yes, I know chance. what you're talking about, but let's you know? do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, that's, throw it out here, we'll tr we're going to make more private areas for, for the ladies, we're going to have this as, as private as it possibly can be. Um, but like I said, man, rough, rugged, and raw. So, um, you know, we'll have two ply toilet we'll paper, but you might that's, be sitting in an outhouse when you use it, you know? Um, but we're not going to create a ton of waste, and we're not going to have a hundred smelly ass, gross porta potties. No, we're uh, not. Does anybody really miss a porta potty? Like, however, you think what you want about the shit house, but the porta potty's worse. I guarantee it. And nobody's going to tip this over with you inside of it. That I can also guarantee. <laughs> not this time, baby. Not this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Not, ag not again. Not never, again. Never again. Once, shame uh, on me. <laughs> so let's see. I think those were the big, oh, and the most important, again, safety first, mm -hmm. safety all day. All day. Safety always. There are a lot of different ways that we're going to be really safe on July 1st. One of them is going to be a free shuttle. So again, you don't need to drive, especially if you live here in Burlington. Don't even bother. 
We got a bottle. We got a private bus that we're taking. A bottle. It's that a, uh, is what we have. It's the <laughs> bus shuttle. It's a bottle. You heard it here first, it's folks. Free. It's free. We got the free bottle. You just show up here at the designated times, and they're on the website where you can find it, and you just get on the bus. Uh, the What's bus, that website, Eli? The bus is not. I think it's HeddyVermont.com. H-E-A-D-Y-V-E-R-M-O-T.com. Mm -hmm. Slash celebration. That'll take you to everything you need to know. So oh, we'll put it at the bottom of the screen, right free, here, folks. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. On the is it, on the it, YouTube version. No, we don't have that technology. Okay, forget it. <laughs> in the post, we'll have that. We'll have that in post. We'll, we'll put it in, in post. post. <laughs> um, shuttle safety. It's going to be a really fun shuttle. Don't bring glass bottles. Don't bring alcohol. We'll have beer there. Shout out to Have Your Cake Catering. They are going to be taking care of it all. Got our liquor permit approved What's up, Johnny? today. Thanks. Um, so big shout out for Neely, getting that taken care of. Britt, Michael, the entire team, Johnny and Benji, thank you guys. Big fans of those guys over there at Skinny P. Um, they hold us down. So again, uh, we got the shuttle. We've got camping on site, tent camping. I thought we agreed it's a bottle. It's a bottle, yes, the bottle. We're well, we, we, I don't know. We'll, we'll work on that. It's, think about this. Yeah, yeah. Marketing. Yeah, you're the branding work. guy. Yeah, okay. I'll get, I'll right, get yeah. on it. Oh, bottle. Yeah. <laughs> well, wow, can of planners. They really are good. <laughs> um, the penny. camping. The camping. If you leave the venue at 10 o'clock at night and get in your car and drive out of there and you get pulled over, I got nothing for you, man. I got nothing for you. There's no excuse at all. We talked to the cops. They're not going to be sitting out there, you know, waiting to pull people over. They might be a little bit further down the road, though, and there's <laughs> just really no excuse <laughs> at all. Everybody knows this event's happening. Everybody knows it's happening locally. So you want to be safe. You want to not be the first person to get a fucking weed dewy on July 1st. We would really all appreciate if there were no weed deweys on July 1st. Yeah. Like everybody in this scene would really appreciate that. So um, take the shuttle. It's free. The last one leaves at like 11.30. So you can stay, party your bag off, swim, pass out, wake up, have some food, a lot of really good food, get on the shuttle, be back home in Burlington, and still go make last call. That is a hell of a Sunday. Sounds good to me. And still go make reggae night. Shout out to those guys. Um, I think that's really, I think that's, that's it. That's a, lot, that's a lot for people to know. We have, we have videos, we've done video walkthroughs, we'll post them again. I'm gonna be there pretty much from Wednesday on. Um, we have a volunteer session Wednesday night from six to eight. And then again, Saturday is gonna be like volunteer palooza. You can hit up Kathy at Vermont, uh, Kathy at HeddyVermont.com if you do wanna volunteer. It's gonna take four hours to earn your ticket and you're gonna earn your ticket. Um, so if you are physically able to do manual labor, uh, you're going to be doing it. Wear long pants, wear comfortable shoes. Uh, if you have a physical handicap, I promise we'll find something else for you to do as well. Um, so again, you don't have money to buy a ticket, put in your four hours, show up, sweat for us, and we'll make sure that you get in and have a good time. It's not about the money. So um, anything else? This yeah, awesome, we're going to put canaplanners.com up here now. Can we do that? But can we do it with uh, <coughs> rainbow? I was going to say, we do, we do now have... Oh, we got we that. Do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so go to canaplanners.com. Uh, talk to me about your branding needs. Let's get you into a website. Let's get you looking awesome. Let's get you prepped for July 1st. And you're going even even bigger and better, man. Congratulations. Thank it's you. Been, it's been exciting to... Uh, See everybody, everybody kind of grow together and it's, it's awesome. just like, it's, it's still the, it's just barely getting It just seems like yesterday level. we were a bunch of scrappy kids right? smoking joints out in the back. <laughs> Talking about someday I'll be smoking joints on out Facebook back. to dozens of people, you know? <laughs> um, thank you guys. You guys have more questions. Tune in here. We'll put this up on Facebook. We'll follow up. We'll come in and answer more questions in the comments. In the meantime, thank you all. Stay safe out there. There's only a few more days left. Happy legalization, Don't do it. Eli. Happy legalization. Oh, it's going to be a good time. I <laughs> uh, hope to see you guys all there to celebrate in person July 1st. In the meantime, thank you again to Jam Creative. As always, the man behind the decks, Mr. Sean Simonetti. Sean Simonetti Productions, making this look so good. At least the camera angles. Yep. Not much you can do about this shirt, but, you know, it's all yep. good. 
Uh, I came we'll, out of we'll the farm. I came out of the farm, dude. This is long hair. Don't care for me right now. Yeah, it's really long. You know, so. <laughs> Motherfucking, there's the candle planters right there. Uh, he is good. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.